Hello again, everyone. Today I am here to talk about my travel watercolor setup that I plan to bring on my upcoming trip to Iceland. Uh, and I'm still hoping that it is truly an upcoming trip because <laughs> now there's more COVID testing requirements and that sort of thing for the trip. So uh, it's still in the plan and we'll see how it goes. But anyway, I'm gonna show you the setup regardless. So because this is gonna be sort of a, um, I don't know, a little more rural, rustic trip, because uh, we are going to be going a little off the beaten path. I decided not to do sort of a fancier leather container to hold all of these things. And this is a Tom Bin bag. This, I believe, is called, um, I think it's like their EDC bag or something like that. I'm going to put a link down below to this specific product. Uh, they have been going in and out of stock on their website. So, if it's out of stock at the particular time that you're looking, uh, they should be back in stock. I've profiled Tom Bin before on the channel. They're a really great company. Everything's made in the USA. They really try to focus on um, sustainable materials and recycling and all that sort of thing. This in particular was made with a recycled material, which I really liked. Um, and I like the color of it too, but uh, I don't think they're always made out of recycled material. So, um, I mean, just take a look at what their different materials are. But one thing that is very consistent about their, their bags is that they're all very, very sturdy and they're all very well made. And these are made up in Seattle. So I'll show you the outside of the bag and how it's configured. I think it's gonna be pretty good for uh, going around and doing outdoor sketching and that sort of thing. So basically it has this front part here. There's this front zipper on this side. There's a little handle where you can hold this. This actually ended up having a mistake on the back. So this is the larger size. They have two different sizes. One is hmm, maybe about half that size. I don't, I don't have, I actually have one of the smaller ones, but I don't have it handy. Otherwise I would compare it. But this larger size normally has another strap that goes through the middle here that's I think it's just a straight strap or it has these little dividers like these do. And the purpose of those is so that you can put pens and things in here and they will have a little um, place to slide into in the middle. Uh, they did, because this was one of the first production runs of this, they did make an error in their um, manufacturing. They talked about uh, how it was missing that <laughs> element. All the ones that you get now should have that element on them. I opted to just keep this the way it is because I don't generally put pens and things in here. Uh, what you can do though is you can put um, things in here to turn this into a little shoulder bag. So you can put little loops through here uh, and then put a strap on if you want. So that's that's quite nice because you can use this as essentially like a little purse or something like that. Uh, personally, I just plan to keep it in my backpack when I am uh, going around. And um, this little thing, this little handle here, you can either cart this around with the handle, but it's also nice when you have it open, which I'll show you the inside here in a minute. It'll help you you know, keep this on your hand so it doesn't slide off, which is kind of nice. So I'm gonna show you what's in here in this front pocket, and then I'm gonna show you what's inside. So here on this front pocket, I opted to have a watercolor palette, and this is uh, an adapted <laughs> palette. So this is a Schmincke watercolor palette. It did come with paints in it. Uh, when I got it, I think I profiled it on the channel, but I took the inside, the inside piece off. Uh, there's normally a little tray with three rows to hold colors, but I took that off so that I could hold more watercolors. And I've already done a little swatching here of all these watercolors. I'm not going to swatch these out today. Uh, part of the reason is because these are essentially, uh, let's see, do I have that handy? Let me grab that real quick. So these are the colors, for the most part, that were originally in this red palette. And I've really kind of come to know these colors and learn to paint with them pretty well. So I didn't really want to uh, create a whole new palette, uh, especially since I have a separate palette, which I've showed before in my um, Traveler's Notebook that I plan to bring. I'll put a link to that video down below. Um, 
So that's a newer palette, but this one, I kind of wanted to bring something that I'm more familiar with. I fit most of what was in here in here without the tray, which I thought was kind of amazing. I actually ended up only leaving a couple of colors out. So it, it obviously doesn't fit the um, colors that are around here in the palette and I wouldn't want to remove them. Uh, but these were more experimental colors anyway and I wasn't really using them as much as all of the ones that were up here. So this shows you what was in this entire palette. So the majority of what was in here is now in here. So the only two colors that I opted to leave out were a uh, Holbein Shell Pink, which, you know, for Iceland, I didn't know if that would be a color I would use. And I also left out Daniel Smith uh, Cobalt Teal because first off, uh, Daniel Smith Genuine Sleeping Beauty Turquoise is very similar to Cobalt Teal. And uh, I didn't know, I didn't think I would have a need for two very similar colors like that. So those are the only two colors I left out. And then the rest of them fit in here very nicely. I was super excited about that. It's pretty heavy, but it's not crazy. Um, but this is still, you know, portable in my opinion. And one of the other reasons why I wanted to have this palette instead of a smaller uh, pocket palette, uh, I, I always plan on bringing a metal palette, but uh, there are some smaller ones. But this one has a lot more mixing area, which I also thought was nice. There's only two over here, but you have all these little individual mixing areas that I thought would be really handy to have. So there's that. So I will put a link down below to the video the, or the, well, at least the most recent video that I did on that larger palette that I transferred most of this from. And so you'll be able to see the swatching of those colors there. And this fits quite nicely in this front pocket. And that's part of the reason why I also chose this particular <laughs> setup because it does fit the palette in the front quite well. And I might have chose something different if I decided to bring a smaller set of colors. But part of the reason why I wanted to have the smaller set of colors as well, or, or this larger set of colors, is that I'm so used to having so many options and I didn't really want to limit myself. So here on the inside, I have several different writing instruments. These are these three are fountain pens, and I'll I'll show what those are here in a minute. Um, and then I have a uh, Carrie Pentel pencil that has a really hard lead in it because it has a four four H, which I like to use with watercolor because it's a it makes for a really light line, and I like to um, have a line that kind of goes away <laughs> in the background. And then I have a Sharpie pen, which is just basically a felt tip permanent pen, which is kind of nice for just basic sketching. And, you know, if, if, if I don't feel like getting out one of the fountain pens, this is quite nice. Although it does have a darker line than the inks I've chosen for that, other than maybe this one, because I'll show you what that is here in a minute. And uh, then I have a Uniball Signo white pen. So this I use for... Uh, highlights, details towards the end. And I also included just a Sarasa, Zebra Sarasa um, gel pen. And this is permanent ink as well. And this is a sort of a, a neutral blue color. I could sketch with it, but I also thought it would be nice to have just a writing instrument that um, that would be easy to write with if, if I, again, if I didn't want to get out these fountain pens. And then this particular thing, this is a China marker by Sharpie. And this sort of has a different purpose than the, uh, the, the Uniball Signo white pen. So this one, I would draw on the watercolor paper before doing any watercolor. And this allows me to reserve white spaces. It sort of works a little bit like a, um, a resist so that the watercolor will not stick where you've done this. This cannot be removed though. So you want to make sure that it, that you're putting this on wherever you, you truly want it to stay white through the whole process. So let's go on to the fountain pens. So this is an Opus 88 uh, demo in a gray. And I really, really have grown to love these Opus 88s. They are so versatile. Um, their nibs are easily swapped out because they are uh, Yovo nibs and 
the this one in particular is size six so um uh, there are different models of opus 88 that use bach nibs but this the the demos do use the yovo nibs but i can swap them out really easily with with other nibs from other pens or other uh, or whatever i want to put in there and this one i have included a needlepoint nib from Franklin Christoph. I ordered this on a different pen because the uh, the custom ground nibs cannot be purchased separately from a pen, but I swapped it onto this one because I wanted to use the needlepoint nib, which gives you a really, really fine line. Um, let's see, what do I have off to the side where I can just show you real quick? So I do have this uh, a Yush paper here. It's probably not gonna give you the best demonstration, but you'll, because the um, lines show up a little bit broader on this paper, but you get a fairly, a fairly thin line here. And um, I like to use this a lot for, and, and the lighter you press, the lighter the line will be. I like to use this for hatching or uh, shading and just general sketching. And the ink that I have in here now is Lennon Toolbar's Atmospheric Cloudy Day, which is, I think, a really, really great neutral gray. It, um, it has a little bit of a teal hint to it, but it's just very, very subtle. Uh, you probably can't see that. It's it's almost grayish black, So, but it's not black, which makes it kind of nice as a contrast to a true black. So that's what's in there. Oh, and the other thing that's really nice about these for travel is because these are eyedropper pens. Uh, not all eyedropper pens have a little piston inside, but this has a piston inside that can be sealed off. So you can seal off the uh, front of the pen from getting ink in the reservoir. So basically you just screw this down and it is closed, you open it and the ink will flow. So this will be really nice for preventing leaking and that sort of thing when traveling. Because I do plan to bring this whole setup on the airplane with me. I'm not sure if I'll do any sketching on the airplane itself, but um, it'll be nice to, to not have it leak everywhere when I do though. And so this is another little Opus 88. This is the Fantasia model, which is discontinued now, but I've, you, I've still seen it in a few different places, so you might still be able to find it. And this has a smaller nib. This has a Yovo number no. five nib, and I have swapped this out for a needle point in number no. five from Franklin Christoph. So um, I wanted to have, you know, some variety in inks, but I also wanted to, um, and this is a, what did I put in here? This is, um, I think this is a Birmingham permanent ink. This I believe is iron girder. I think that's what it is. But I really like the fact that you can get, a, with, with both of these needle points, you can get a pretty strong line if you're you know, using normal pressure, but if you use really light pressure, you can get a really nice, more faded line. And this is also sort of a nice neutral that is not, not uh, typical. I mean, it's, and it's also not brown. It's it's more like a mauve. Uh, but I like that depending on what kind of composition I'm doing, I might want different colors for the background. But I do like to do sort of an underdrawing before I do watercolor sketching. So that's what these are for. And then this one is a Twisby Eco that has platinum carbon black in it. And this is just a regular extra fine. As you can see, I do like to sketch with <laughs> fine nibs, but this one does get a, a stronger line than the two needle points. And also because, you know, it's, it's platinum carbon black, it is going to be pretty uh, strong as far as the black in itself too. And, you know, this, <laughs> one of the reasons why I really, really love the Twisby Eco is that I have had this platinum carbon black in here for quite a long time. It's never dried out in here. It is, the nib has always been wet and ready to write. Um, if, if it had dried a little bit on the nib, I probably would have cleaned this ink out because um, that's really the, the, the harm. If, if the permanent, because Platinum Carbon Black is a permanent ink. If you let permanent ink dry on a fountain pen nib or in the pen, uh, it can stain really badly and be hard to get out. So if it had done any of that, I would have cleaned it, but uh, it's working fine. Like it keeps going. I, I love these Twisby Ecos for that reason. And if you're looking for sort of an inexpensive pen 
to use for sketching. The Eco is great in an extra fine nib, assuming you like the fine lines in your sketching, because uh, it's really versatile. And like I said, it holds a lot of ink and it, and it doesn't seem to dry out. None of my Ecos seem to dry out. So this bag has a larger compartment here, which I'll go into in a minute because there's lots of stuff in there. And then it has a few other little zippered compartments, one on the top and one on the bottom. And I'll show you what I have in there. I'm gonna take this out for ease of unzipping. And then it also has these little, um, I don't know what these are, these little plastic loops here, which you could use to attach this to something, but you also could just put like a keychain or uh, you know something else that you wanted to clip to it. That's one really nice thing about the uh, Tom Bin bags is that they're very flexible and expandable and you can use them in a lot of different ways. I, um, I have a few different bags from them and I love them all. Okay, so then up here, so I think that's all I have in here. So this one just goes down midway um, from the top and then the other one goes midway from the bottom. I have some 4-H LEDs in here and then I have this little wristband. And this is actually a trick that I learned from Liz Steele. So this is a newer one, but I, I have another one that's a little more funky. Um, basically you put this on your wrist and then when you're painting, you can just wipe your brush. Well, actually I would have it on my left wrist, but I have a watch on now. So <laughs> this, is, this is just for illustration purposes. But um, you can use this essentially as uh, as you would like a paper towel or a cotton cloth while you're watercoloring because you can just wipe it off on there and go forward like if you have too much water on it or something and it's kind of nice to just have that readily available instead of having to have another another thing that you pull out so that's why i have that in there and i'll just put that back down in there and that fits perfectly in this little pocket up here and then down in this one i have an eraser just a little one and then I have some little clips to hold sketchbooks open. And um, I forget which sketchbook I was planning to bring. I believe I think it's an A5 Etcher cotton sketchbook that I was planning to bring with me to try out. Um, but I mean, you can use any smaller size sketchbook to go along with this. It obviously doesn't fit in here. So that's something you'd have to carry separately. Um, but this is to hold the pages of the sketchbook open. These little clips are quite nice because they're just binder clips, but then they fold down to take up less room. Uh, I really like that. Um, and then you just, you know, clip that onto your sketchbook to hold your paper open, to hold your book open. So that's really nice. So those are in here along with this little Tombow eraser, which, is, which I love as my main eraser, just because it's tiny and it works really well. Okay, so let's put this back in here. Oh, and uh, one thing to mention is, so this is not elasticized on the top, but it is on the bottom. So uh, you're gonna have it, it, I mean, they give you pretty generous slots here, so the not having elastic is not a problem, but just that's just something to know. And then on these, these are both elastic, and these are sort of in between. And then last but not least, Let's get in here with this thing. And I probably went a little overboard with the number of travel brushes that I'm planning on bringing, but um, I kind of wanted to have everything in the same place. And this is actually, oh, that came, top came off. This is actually not tra uh, travel sketching related, but this is a little uh, permanent adhesive runner by Tombow. And uh, I like to have this handy so that I can um, I may not do it in my watercolor sketchbook, but I probably would do it more likely in my um, traveler's notebook where I'm going to be taking notes and stuff. This is so I can tape down things that, uh, that the double stick tape that I have in that little setup might not work for or, you know, if I just want to do it real quick. So that's why I would bring that. That's been really handy in prior trips. And then in here I have this little natural sponge which can be used for texture, for painting trees. There's not a lot of trees in Iceland, so we'll, we'll see if I'll end up using that. I have a little uh, Nalgene bottle for water. So generally I only travel with one of these and um, just use one bottle of water and then have like, you know, a drinking bottle or something that I fill this with. Uh, 
it might be good to also bring two, but really only one fits in here with everything else that I have in here. And I'll show you why I don't really need more than one because of the other things I have in here. But also if I just wanted to bring a little bit of water uh, to have handy, I can just fill this up and put it in here. It's only two ounces, I believe. Uh, I, th I think it's two ounces. Yes, two ounces. But it's really nice. The, the opening is wide enough to fit a brush inside pretty easily. And they're really handy. And then now the ridiculous amount of brushes I plan on bringing. Uh, I might end up cutting this down. But I, <laughs> I really have a lot of brushes. But I really kind of wanted to have some options. And I'll, sh I'll show you these brushes one by one here in a minute. And oh, another brush. So this is a... Uh, and this one I might not need to bring because of another brush that I've added to this, but this would be used to wet a page or something like that. Um, but I might not end up bringing that just because basically when I was putting this together, I kind of threw all my brushes that I th was thinking of bringing in here. And then I have a little travel spray bottle. So this is just water and it's a little sprayer, which you can use to create effects or, you know, just wet your paper as well. And then I have a travel toothbrush to um, do watercolor effects with that too. So you can put watercolor on here. You basically just like rub the watercolor on and then when you do that, it'll flick the watercolor onto the page. It's really nice for getting sort of like little splashes of color. So that's why that's in there. And then this is an art masking fluid pen which is quite nice. You can reserve areas of white with masking fluid. Uh, this is removable, whereas the uh, China marker or China, is it, yeah, it's China marker, uh, is not removable. So it, it just depends, you know, which, which one you would want to use for any particular purpose. I have some washi tape to tape off edges. I may end up replacing this washi tape with uh, just regular scotch tape because scotch magic tape because that actually works way better in my opinion for um, marking off the edges if I want to do that. And then I have two little travel containers and that's why I was saying I don't necessarily need another one of these bottles. So these are from Art Toolkit and they open up and they're just little small containers. I decided to put two in here because if I want to have two different bottles, I can, or I can use this bottle and one of these, um, or I can store water in here. And then, you know, I think half of this would probably fill up this about halfway, and then I could have two different water bottles. So that's nice. And then I have a ruler in here, which can also double as sort of an angle, an angle finder or angle drawer. <laughs> so that's nice. And then the last thing I have in here is, um, I forget what these are called. I think they're called moleskines, actually. Uh, they're to put on your feet. They stick to your feet or your heel uh, to prevent blisters. And that I have in actually a couple of different places in my setup because um, it's always good not to get blisters when you're hiking around. So in here, there are a few of these little round plastic loops as well. So you could put things on there as well. So I'm gonna put these down into their collapsible form. Sometimes they're not super easy to do, but these are really nice to have. Put that in there. I think I'll put that over there, put there. And all of these things fit really easily in this package. So I'm going to go ahead and put this back in here for now. But like I said, I might end up taking that out because later on I added this brush, which I think, or also this brush that I could use instead of that. So this is sort of a larger angled brush. So I could use that to wet my page. Um, this one is synthetic. It's by um, Da Vinci. And then this one is also a larger mop, which I could use for that as well. So I'll have to think about it. I, you know, I have a little bit of time to think which one of those I want to bring. I probably, I probably want to bring the travel brushes at the very least, um, but I might get rid of the larger brush. 
And then this is one that I'm definitely going to bring as well. This is by Rosemary Brush Company, and this is what they call an eradicator. So basically it's a very small, little, short, stiff bristled brush. And if you get outside the lines or want to erase something, you would dab this with water. Um, you want it to be almost dry, but have a little bit of water in it. And then you would uh, gently wipe away where you have color that you don't want. Um, it's really, really useful. So that is definitely, they only just recently started making the uh, travel version of that. This, uh, this one I may or may not bring. This is a silver, um, silver black velvet voyage round brush. So it's basically it's a softer brush. I think it might be squirrel hair, which uh, is smaller than the other one, but uh, is also quite nice. This is a mop size three. This was one of my nicer brushes from Rosemary. Actually, this is a Kalinsky Sable uh, number three mop which is kind of a perfect brush. If you were just to bring one brush, this might be the one I would bring. And then I have some synthetic brushes. This is a size eight. Again, I will I will winnow down this list before I go. And this is a, another synth synthetic from Princeton. It's the Aqua Elite. This is a number six. These are great synthetic brushes. I really like them. Uh, let's see, so I have an R9 Squirrel Mop, which again is a softer mop brush. Again, I probably don't need to bring an additional mop, so I'll decide which one I want to bring out of these. I need to wet that. I'm just going to take a little bit of spit. <laughs> I know that's lovely. And kind of um, get that back down into shape so I can put it in the container. Sometimes, my only complaint with rosemary brushes is that sometimes uh, I feel like the barrel is a little bit small for the voluminous brushes that they have. Um, but if they're wet, they, it's no problem. And then they all have this little hole on the end. So even if they're wet and you close them, they should be able to dry out. And then this is one that I use a lot, a lot, a lot. This is a, uh, a one fourth inch dagger from Rosemary Brush. And this is a sable and synthetic blend. So this I'll probably bring, um, whether I'll bring the larger dagger, I, I don't know. Um, but those are all good options. <laughs> I, I just kind of threw them all in there when I was like, well, these are all brushes that I'm going to consider taking. I will winnow that down. and uh, But everything else I think is pretty much good to go and I will have lots of options. And this, you can hold it in your hand with this strap like this, which is really kind of nice if you want to you know, just take things out. You could lean your um, sketchbook here. That might be a little too, you know, unruly to have that much weight on there, but, uh, but it's a really nice setup. And zippers closed quite easily, and it fits everything I will need to have for watercolor sketching. All right, I'll try to include a few general links down below for some of the products here. I'm not gonna include each and every one, but if you have some questions based on, you know, what is this thing or where can I get it, something like that, feel free to ask below and I'll answer when I can. Uh, I will put a link to Tom Bin because they're a great, great company. I love all their bags. I don't think you can go wrong <laughs> with getting any of their products. Um, but I think that's all I had for you today. So feel free to like and or subscribe. And I hope to see you next time. Thanks so much. Bye.